we stop focusing on ourselves and look more towards others. We look more towards the faults of others and disregard our own faults. We look at our own goodness and disregard the goodness of others. Generally, sometimes when you find people that they say, this person's got this issue, this person's got that issue, along these lines, what we're basically doing is one of two things. Number one, we're comparing ourselves to that individual. Yeah? And then what we do is, is that other than that, then we regard it as good or bad based on the internal things I do or don't do. For example, if you see somebody who gets a bit angry, you'll say, yeah, he gets angry a little bit, you know, he gets angry. Because we're guilty of the same thing. If we see someone with a certain trait, a certain quality, a certain characteristic, a certain khubi or khami, right? We then regard it as... How we react to that, it depends on how we see that within ourselves. I'll make it simple and give you a simple example. So what happens is, is that if we see somebody that doesn't really pray salah much, where we pray five times salah, without any doubts, any issues, we never make sure our salah goes qada. You will say, yeah, look at what sort of person is he, man. Namaz ni parta bichara. Ben namazi, yaar. That thinking may come into our mind. If we don't pray our salah too much, and he doesn't, we'll say, yeah, and we'll say something like that. <laughs> okay? Allah forbid, giving an example of a sin, somebody bichara has got a bit of a habit, he watches films which aren't too of a good nature. So he will then perhaps say, yaar, kya kar sakte bichara? the person's a victim to his nafs. And because you do the same thing, but if you don't watch anything like that at all, you say, yaar, what sort of person is he, man? The guy watches films, he's like this, X, Y, and Z. So generally we get into this habit, people can get into this habit of comparing themselves to other people, comparing themselves to others. And based on how you compare yourself to others, and based on how what you see within yourself, you consider something good or bad. Why am I touching upon this? Because, you know, it's quite common, and may Allah forgive us, Allah help us. Like in, you know, when, when a person's generally who's quite gunagar, they're far from deen, they're quite humble. Because they know that they're sinful, they're quite humble and they know they're, they're doing wrong. And uh, may Allah guide us, it, you know, but when somebody sometimes becomes involved in deen, their attitude changes really quickly. In the beginning stages, someone can become very harsh, very quickly, very intolerant, very difficult to be around. They lose their sense of humor sometimes, sometimes they become ultra sakhat, and it's as if everyone's going jahannam, only you're going Jannah, that sort of mentality. It starts off like this because what, it, what happens is that the person perhaps lived the period of their life in ghafla. A person lived the period of their life away from Allah Ta'ala. So when they do come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what happens is they suddenly have this josh. But then what can translate in becoming very, very unaccommodating and sometimes very difficult to be around? It's actually supposed to be the other way. Because when you come into deen, when you start practicing Islam, the number one thing it should be is what? We don't look at others, we look within ourselves. Kichola, this brother, he does this guna, and that's what I can see. For example, someone drinks alcohol. We're not saying it's a good thing, it's a bad thing, it's a haram, guna kabira. Allah said don't drink, Nabi Sallallahu said don't drink, we don't do it. But khalas, end of story. But we see someone who drinks alcohol. And that's all I can see within that individual. It's possible he has one burai, one evil, and 999 good things. Whereas in myself, I don't have that one thing, but I do tens and dozens of other things. I may consider myself better than people, taqabbur, which is a major, major sin. He might not consider that. So he's free from that thing, which I'm not free of. This looking down upon people with haqarat, looking down upon people, is a major sin within the deen. And it happens with all people, but it can creep in slightly more with those people who tend to be more practicing. Okay, we're a bit more prayari, tasab gunagar, yeh jannami loge yaar. They're going jahannam. All these are all bid'a and kafir, they're all like this and so on. We can, some people, some people, bhai, har, aap to aap, aap, aap ke alawak baat kar raho. I'm talking, but this can generally creep in. Where people then start to become intolerant. People then start to become very sakhat, very harsh, and people then start to look up on others. The number one thing we as Muslims need to do is invite unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with hikmah. Invite people with wisdom and, and good counsel. 
And in good counsel, if you want someone to change a trait and a characteristic within themselves, you're not going to do it harshly. You're not going to do it by speaking down to people. Yeah, the fit of anger, we can say things that we regret. I've done it in the past a number of times. When you say something in the heat of anger, you shouldn't have done, you need to retract, go back. And sometimes even at the extent, we, even we may need to go and ask people for forgiveness and say, I'm sorry, but that wasn't called for. I asked for an apology. The thing is, is that our counsel, our nasiha, and our advice should be soft, should be naram, it should be befitting. When someone came to the Prophet sallallahu and he asked Rasulullah give me ijazah to make zina. What did he sallallahu do? Did he call him a kafir? Did he say you're a na'udhu billah mushrik, you're a bidhati? Go from here, get out of my majlis, go to Abu Jahl, go and start doing shirk. He didn't answer anything like that. He addressed him in a soft, compassionate way, made him understand that if you're going to make zina with someone, it's going to be someone's, I'm just translating the hadith in my own words, someone's mother, sister, auntie, so on. And would you like someone to do that to you? You wouldn't. So then why do you want to do that to somebody else? So he tried to put that person in the, in the same position. And then that person understood that, hold on a second, this doesn't seem rationally right. And then Aab sallallahu alayhi wa made dua for him to clean his heart from this ill, this malady. And he said that after this time, I never looked at zina the same way. I hated it more than anything on the face of the earth. Because Aab sallallahu alayhi wa saw that there's a characteristic inside him. He's got many khubiyah, but there's this one khami. He was... He had an inclination to something which was haram. He didn't do it. It was a thought, it was a jazba, it was a desire. So he وسلم, dealt with him in a compassionate way. He, he invited him with, with what? Bil hikmati wal al hasana, with hikmah and wisdom and good counsel. See, the problem is when we generally find people that are associated with deen, people become overzealous. Overzealous. And that's why sometimes people don't like to call religious people to certain gatherings. They are they're gonna destroy the mahal. Because sometimes they may say, this is haram, that's haram, that's haram. First and foremost, I say, personally me, I've been invited to certain gatherings. Like there was this wedding that was taking place and they, they said it's going to be open mix, it's going to be like Mendy going on and all And I was like, well, I'm not going to turn up then, am I, naturally? One, because I'm not Hindu, I'm Muslim. I don't understand Asian culture, I understand Islam. So I'm not going to go there and sit there without, and I won't be able to sit there calmly without a frown coming on my forehead when I see khurafat, especially things that we've taken from Hindu and Sikh and other religions. So I just declined the invite. I said, I'm sorry, brother. Allah give you barakah, but I, I won't be able to attend. I'm sorry. And I politely declined. But if I go there, now it's wrong for me to say, yeah, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Like make tanqeed. Hey, Najal, don't go. Who invited me? Don't go. Simple. Give them nasiha, just say, look, in my humble opinion, I think that it would be better if you to do like this. Allah give you barakah. Allah ham sabqa tawfiq there. But you see, when we start becoming hakim, brother, don't you understand this is guna? By jahannam ka fasla on wale. You know, in that sort of attitude, this is where we need to, this is what, this is what we need to change. It's the haqar looking down upon certain individuals. This is why I said, for us as Muslims, we don't, don't look down upon any individual, even non-Muslims, subhanAllah. Even non-Muslims don't think that we're better than... Based on our actions and this moment, our Iman, we don't know are we going to Jannah or not. We don't know if they're going to Jahannam or not. So we need to look at every individual as a possibility that it's possible. Ain't mumkin that that person can become Muslim, become better than me, excel me. And Allah forbid, Allah forbid, I could lose my Iman and I could end up going in the depths of Jahannam. Okay? So this is why it's essential for a Muslim, a believer, a person who says La ilaha illallah to always have a good hopes on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never feel content. Hence even there were some ulama that were mentioning that even at the moment they don't regard themselves filhal at this current moment right now as even better than people who are disbelievers and kufar. Why? Because I don't know, this is, I'm relaying that scholar's words, what he said eloquently. But I don't know at this moment whether when I leave this dunya, I'm leaving with Iman or not. And I don't know for sure whether he's going to die with it without Iman or not. So based on this premise, I can't say I'm better than any individual. And at the same time, I go back to this thing about considering ourselves better than other individuals. It's very possible that someone has a certain khami, a certain deficiency, a certain weakness. But yet he's got a hundred other qualities which Allah loves. And as a result of those qualities, Allah may forgive him. But on the flip side, I may have all these qualities where I pray salah, I do fasting, I give zakat, I've been to hajj, I spend time in doing da'wah activities and mashallah, I attend gatherings of ulama and dars quran and so on, but yet I have takabbur. 
حقارت کی نظر سے لوگوں کو دیکھتا ہوں آئی لک ڈاؤن اپن پیپل آئی لک ڈاؤن اپن پیپلز ایکشنز دین اس این ممکن نہ اللہ تعالیٰ مئی فور گیو دیم بہ ہی مئی پنش می آئی کان سی فور شور وٹ ول ہیپن بٹ دس از اے پاسبلٹی بیکاز آئی ڈونٹ نو دا رومز آف اللہ تعالیٰ انفن مرسی آئی ڈونٹ نو اللہ تعالیٰ ہاؤ اللہ گنا جج آل آئی کین سیز وی آر ہوپ فل دا اللہ تعالیٰ ول فور گیو می اینڈ ان شاء اللہ وی گو ود ایمان اینڈ دس از دی دا میتھڈالوجی وی شوڈ آل اڈاپٹ I, you ask me a question, do I regard myself as better than non-believers? No. Not, I can't say I'm better now, because I can only say who will die with Iman. Yeah, the fact that I understand my Allah, the fact that I said kalima la ilaha illallah, the fact that I say Muhammadur Rasulullah gives me an edge in terms of my Iman. Iman, yes, we can definitely say that. I'm not going to say sabra, but that's not the, tr- the case at all. Someone who recognizes Allah and acknowledges Allah, acknowledges Rasulullah, you can't say he's exactly the same as someone, Iman, who doesn't believe in Allah. Is that a fair point? What do you reckon? If you've got someone who does shirk and worships idols and someone who's a muahid, are we going to say they're both equal? Of course not. It's not possible. But I'm, the thing is, we can't say for sure who's going to go Jannah and who's going to go Jahannam. At this moment in time, we can't say that for sure. Because we don't know who's going to die with Iman and without Iman. And when a person dies and goes in the court of Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, then we will see for sure. This is why it's important. Forget looking down upon non-Muslims. If we can't look at non-Muslims like this, now you ask, let me ask you a question. How then can we look down upon Muslim brothers, Muslim sisters? Unfortunately, a lot of tafriq exists within the Muslim ummah. A lot of ikhtilaf. And it generally boils down to a lot of khair. I don't want to go into it in too much depth, but we, someone, for example, prays hands here. Someone prays hands here. Someone prays with hands on the side, and these things have become argumentative things. And on this basis, it's a religious base. If a brother holds his hands here, and someone holds his hands here, they're both praying salah, right? They're both established from hadith. If someone says amin quietly, someone says loudly, someone does raf'al, then someone doesn't. Everything is established from hadith. If something wasn't from hadith, then there would be no space for it within the deen. We are intolerant towards these differences, Just imagine how far we've gone. The prophetic ideal was what? We don't look down upon any individual. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, you have no fadl and no greatness. There of, of, there's an Arab, an Arab over a non-Arab, black or white, rich or poor. Inna allaha la yandhuru ila suwarikum wa la ila amwalikum wa lakin yandhuru ila qulubikum wa a'amalikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at your, at your, at your zahir, your apparent, apparel. He doesn't look at your wealth. He looks at what? Your hearts. He looks at your action. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at. We should look at exa- each other exactly the same. And we should make ta'wil for individuals. We should try to have husnul dhan. If we see someone, I gave you, remember I, I, and I'll rewind you and tell you the example. I told you about my uncle who fell outside the pub, hurt himself. And someone said, even though he was waiting at the bus stop, someone phoned my grandfather, yeah, he's out there, but the pub is out there. He fell outside the pub. Yeah, technically it wasn't a lie because the pub is 20 meters here, he's here, so he is outside, but where was he waiting? And remember I told you that example, someone phoned up a house, he said, oh, I, there's a man in your house, bro. But it was, it was his, the woman's brother. See that sort of one? What it led to? It led to arguments, fights, and feuds. If you can cut it out of the jar, these wouldn't even take place. There's a possibility that there's a ta'wil to that person's answers. Do you understand? And if, and this is the job of ulama and mufti and ikram and, and the, if, it's for them to pass for tawa and, and advise the ummah. For us as individuals, it's not really our job to go around correcting, passing fatwa on individual. Worry about ourselves. Yes, something is sari, absolutely open. Then obviously, then there's no ta'wil possible. Fair enough. And I don't want to go, start giving examples. There's plenty in the markets for examples. But I'm saying where it's possible, Just, and then where it's possible, we should have husnul dhan for our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. And try not to find faults and try to look for differences of feuding or fighting. When the ummah becomes one, there you'll see the full potential in this ummah. If we look at each other's difficulties, small ikhtilafat, small minor, minor, minor di- issues and differences amongst us, wallah, we'll be arguing like this until the day of judgment. So may Allah give us guidance, inshallah. The khulasa of what was today's speech was what? And the khulasa for this particular sort of gathering is look at ourselves first, then look towards others. You will be questioned about your heart before you're questioned about the others. It's like now, for example, now if one of the brothers was a doctor and he came here and gave an announcement and said, those of you, for example, there's been a flu which has become, gone widespread, some t- type of 
waba, some type of plague. And the doctor turned around and says, if you have these, these alamat, these, these signs, you've got this flu, you've got this condition, you're going to die within one week. So for example, now, when, they, when meningitis was widespread, they said, if you have a rash, if 24 hours, you're, you're sweating, red spots, you're feeling sick, you don't like the light. Which bewakuf would be that individual who has all these signs and says, no, no, I'll look at, let's see, who just, who, or square. Has he got it? Has she got it? Look for others. Look towards yourself first. If a doctor said, these, these alamat are signs that you've got cancer, you're not going to say, right, let me see, has he got it? Has he got it? Has he got it? You won't look at other people, you look towards yourself. Why do we look at deeny things different? You know what it boils down to? No qadr for deen. That's what it boils down to. There's no value, is there, really? That's the bitter truth. That sort of thing. No, we're going to be questioned first. Allah will ask you about you first. And then He will ask you about the people who are under your ra'iya, under your supervision, under your guidance. So, inshallah, let's take this nasiha with us. Allah give us hidayat and guidance, inshallah. May Allah Ta'ala inspire us and give us tawfiq to practice and take this message unto others. Subhanallah, inshallah, let's try and take these messages to others as well.